them come. This is their fate. All right, all right. Welcome back. Let me get my bird man. I know y'all heard that, but make sure y'all hear it. All right, all right. Welcome back to the House of Wolves podcast. I am your host, Deontay, here on um, this lovely morning with my near and dear friends, Jalen and Josh. Um, we got quite a bit to talk about. Game Awards was a little insane, slightly rushed, but a little insane. It felt Three hours and 34 minutes come in and it's still feeling um, rushed. It's kind of crazy, but uh, we're going to talk about a lot what's going on, the controversy around that. Uh, Jeff is getting um, pretty much, he's under the fire right now, but a lot of other stuff that came out of that that was really good. Um, the nominees, the winners, and all that good jazz in between. Uh, but we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to get to. Um, stuff on the side there as well. But we're going to gonna get started very shortly but before we do as usual Jalen Josh tell the people how you been what you've been up to what you've been doing how's life going what you've been playing talk to the people uh, yeah I've been been doing pretty good not too much going on right now with uh, me and the fam uh, just want to work every day Mm -hmm. uh, as far as games, just a lot of Call of Duty. I was looking forward to. Uh, sorry, I was looking forward to uh, season one of Call of Modern Warfare Three, and it, it launched this week. And uh, so far, it's been fun. I like the modes that they've made that they've added, like the twelve v twelve mosh pit. Is just you know, just turn your brain off and just play, and it's not too sweaty. Uh, they added some new maps, not like um, remaster maps, just brand new ones. And so far, what I played, they've been decent. Um, with new maps, it, it's hit or miss really, because like they be like over designed and not fun a lot. Of time. Mm. Uh, so far, like the Greece map is uh, pretty good. Um, yeah, and the Warzone updates. I played a little bit of Warzone, had fun. Uh, you know, I'm not a Warzone expert. I'm not good at Warzone, so I can't tell you if it's better than the old one or not. But so far, it's been more fun on the new map and the new and the other changes. Mm -hmm. um, it was another game I played, uh, but I can't remember it. <laughs> so, um, but other than that, yeah, the Game Awards and it's a lot of games upcoming. So. I mean, we had a real good year this year, but, you know, it, it looks like it's going to continue. Uh, for the rest of this year and next year, uh, so yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah, what? <clears throat> what about you, Jalen? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, same old. I mean, not too much. I uh, yes, I say. But yeah, I remember last time I was talking about friends <laughs> being sick, man. I don't, I'm the sick one talking all that. Nah, talking all that. Talking all like, that. Man. Man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think cool. I mean, I, I think I was. I'm, I'm a little stuffed up now, or whatever. But I'm, I'm better now. But uh, so I ain't really like go to work uh, one day. But other than that, I mean, game wise and stuff like that, I ain't really been playing nothing. I said I was gonna buy Hyperlight again. I ended up buying it, uh, so I'll be playing a little bit of that. Um, uh, that and then I actually haven't played Call of Duty until like yesterday. I was playing with one of my boys and uh. I think they had that new map. I think it's called Meat or something like that. And I'm like, I'm like, man, I ain't trying to play none of these whack maps, bro. I'm like, just put me on a regular one. <laughs> like, I, they put me on Meat. I'm looking like, man, I'm going on, I'm going crazy on this level, bro. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it could bring more uh, Meat, meat <laughs> cops to this bar, bro. I'm uh, slicing dice in here. <laughs> you said what? Ain't that the two v two map? I don't know what it is, bro. That's the go off Jalen map. <laughs> 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 nah, it's it's six on six. I think we're playing team deathmatch or something like that. I'm like, man, I'm I'm going, I'm doing damage, damage in this one. So, uh, but nah. Other than that, I mean, I ain't really been playing nothing or yeah. So okay. Well, um, uh, kind of similar. I mean, I've been, I was watching the Game Awards and doing all of that fun stuff and uh, playing Mass Effect a lot because I've been on my Steam Deck uh, quite a bit. Um, 
So I, I, I'm like 13 hours in the Mass Effect 1. I never gave those games a shot because I just was like, no, thank you. They're kind of too old and too... I'm too past it at this point to even try to get into it. Um, but I'm enjoying it. Even like the little, you know, jankiness of the Mass Effect 1 game. I'm still enjoying the game. Um, it's engaging and the story is keeping me engaged. And my actions are obviously showing consequences, which I didn't even think they were that fast, that far developed um before and not i'm pretty sure they get a lot better in other games later games but um even the development level that they are at now seems entertaining and fun and um then i didn't even know you can your your, your companions could perma die so just a lot of that stuff um i like the upgrade system it's not too much it's pretty and fun and interesting um, but um what like story mission you you recently finished or, or doing uh i think i'm talking to i think i'm trying to get uh in touch with this woman the some one of my companions mom um oh, okay yeah, yeah so she's i'm i'm currently at the base talking to a captain that um i was just on this tram station and i finally got to the captain i thought it was gonna be her but it was some dude, so I'm talking to him right now. That's where exactly where I'm at. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think there's a lot of um interesting stuff there, and yeah, I know you guys played it, so um, you probably have some more <laughs> more uh background in it. But like I said, I, I kind of already I I do like it, and I'm gonna keep playing it and. and Take my time with it. I literally haven't played nothing else on my Steam Deck. It's just been the one game that's been paused and forever. So I think for the last like a week and a half, I've just been playing Mass Effect on it. Um, you actually straight? You playing it or are you streaming it? I'm just playing. It. I'm not streaming that. I'm streaming. Um, I'm streaming. Uh, what's the game? Guard Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm almost through with that. I think, and then I start Avatar. I'm, I'm, I'm just streaming it for your Steam Deck, my bad. Oh, I'm like, playing it on my Steam Deck. Oh. No, I'm playing it on my Steam Deck. It's it runs really well, 45 frames per second. Because it's that OLED, you can cut it in half, and that 45 and it goes ties and wells into 90. So um, it just it it runs well on there, and it's low powered. I get about five six hours with that game. Um, so I don't know about Mass Effect two or three, but that game. It's really, really optimized well to play on there. Okay. Yeah, the other um, should run the same game or a little better. Some of the maps are smaller than others. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, uh, like I said, I, I, have, I, have not, I, don't, I don't need to stream that one. Um, but outside of that, I bought an Xbox and <laughs> uh for i remember i told you guys i sold my xbox because i didn't need it well my detector determined he was that was a lie it um i do need an xbox simply for the simple fact is i got a back catalog but two it's um it is the pc that is the most optimized unfortunately like there is no other way to put there's no other way to put it outside of um i'm already sick of play pc gaming to an extent where i would rather use my steam deck and my xbox and playstation to play games versus my very expensive higher end rig because i am tinkering way more than i am playing and i don't like it i never have and i can't get over the curve i don't care how pretty it looks because most of the time I'm just want to enjoy the game and I am too um I am too focused on gaming than the average PC gamer. I feel like most of you guys are liars. Y'all don't play a lot of games, y'all just tinker. Um and I feel like I waste too much time just tinkering with stuff to the point where I don't see how many of you um that have mid-tier hardware or higher end hardware are just pushing through games unless it's old back catalog crap like i'm not trying to play old games i'm trying to play new stuff so 
I just don't like it. And I don't know if I'm going to get over that barrier of just not liking how I have to deal with every game and how I'm getting black screens on Avatar when I'm just trying to switch between settings. Um, and, and Avatar is a really optimized game on PC, and I'm still getting problems. I just... I just don't like it. I'm sorry, I don't. I, maybe I need to switch to NVIDIA or whatever, um, but I don't think that is the problem. I think it's literally just the unknown unknowns of PC gaming that I just don't care for. So I bought an Xbox yeah. again, and um, I'm switching most of the games I play to that, and I'm streaming it to my Steam Deck, and then I am uh, playing the games that I can natively play well on the Steam Deck on my Steam Deck, and I'm I'm leaving it at that. Um, I still might push my catalog when it comes to games on the Steam, um, because I'm hoping at some point they kind of create something that's worthwhile. Because what y'all have right now, very much so, um, not something I'm not something I, I'm I'm looking forward to kind of continuing. To be honest, but we'll see. I'm always I'm, I always get upset when a new game come out, and then I I, I get over it, but. It's just way too much. It just happens too much for me. I can't find the article. I was trying to, because I saw one this weekend about that, where it's like mm-hmm. PC gamer or somebody was 18% of PC gamers buy games new. Like, like when they launch, only 18%. Like, I don't know what that is compared to consoles, but I feel like console players, you know, will buy a game day one a lot more. That's why they generally don't care to keep them optimized day one. They don't buy the games. Like, I can see why y'all market are like this. I can see why they don't care about y'all until 9, 10, 12 months later. I can see why the biggest games kind of be okay with skipping y'all for a little bit. Or not wanting to play, not wanting to put it on there. It's sad because we are consumers at that point and we do have the ability to run these games better than these consoles. But at the end of the day, they have hardware that you can sit on and actually know it's going to be optimized properly. It's going to run well. Like Dead Space. Why do I have micro studies on Dead Space and I'm running a PC that's way stronger than that? It's just stupid stuff like that. So I'm playing it on the Xbox now. And um, I'm, I appreciate Xbox having like the whole, you know, dual, dual, dual ability to play on that and PC in case something on PC maybe runs a little bit better and it's optimized properly and I want to do it that way but um, this ain't no rant it's just telling you what it is I bought an Xbox again because I felt as if um, my Series S wasn't cutting it for graphical capability Um, so I traded that in and bought the X and I am satisfied with the purchase simply for the less of a headache I get when I'm just booting up a game, I got the suspend states. You know, it's just it's everything that you need in a you know a council versus you know having to deal with the rest of the stuff. So I ain't trying to crap on y'all, but I get why y'all are why this space is there, and I understand why y'all want it to be better. But at the same time, your art are the the gaming audience on PC is not catering to wanting developers to actually make their games better. And that might be divisive because it shouldn't matter. But I just think the way we shift in the Steam, um, you know, five, 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 ten years down the line, I probably have a great experience playing Dead Space Remake <laughs> because the hardware is just way too overpowered. <laughs> but right now I'm getting micro stutters and I shouldn't. So I'm out of here. Um, but yeah, outside of that, obviously, I've been chilling. Kids are great. This is a long intro, so we're gonna cut it short. We're gonna get into the actual stuff we want to talk about. Um, so the game awards. Uh, skill. I mean, Jalen finally. I mean, you know, I finally got my boy to watch his very first game awards. He sat there, he watched it, and um, I don't mean, he, I'll let him tell you if he jo- enjoyed it or not. But <laughs> what would you rate the Game Awards this year on the A to F scale? What, what's, your, what's, your, what's your thoughts, Jalen? <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, I'm going to say so. I'm going to talk my talk. Yeah, I do, 
Nah, uh, honestly, man, I mean, it's my first one, so I ain't got much of a baseline. I'll probably mm-hmm. get that joint probably like a, as far as entertainment wise, mm-hmm. I'd say maybe like a C. See? Um, okay. okay. It, yeah. Uh, as far as everything else goes, like, you know, the people speaking, you know, I, I like to thank the committee. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, just the whole overall experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I probably give it a, what we doing, E's or F? <laughs> Incomplete. No, I just like, <laughs> oh I, I probably say F, and that, I only say that because I didn't feel like it was any point to really watching it. Like I could have got all that out of, and I know they do this, but I tried to do something different. They they give a highlight of all the things that you can just go through a little article and just recap all that type of stuff, and I get it. But yeah. I tried to do something different. Beyonce City is in Discord. <laughs> I right, sick. I'm like, let me go ahead and just see what this is about. I ain't got nothing better to be doing anyway besides, you know, staring at the wall more than us. I decided to do it. It's ads after ads after ads and trailers and Baldur's Gate kissing. And I'm just like, <laughs> like bro. I, I just I just need some some quality content. The people wasn't funny there. Like it just Beyonce is telling Anthony Mackie to get off the stage. <laughs> I'm like, damn, hey, man. You know, bro, like, bro. came out playing that. They're oh, the- mixed up. I got five eyes. Like, oh, I just man. can't. Yeah. It, it, just, it just wasn't a a fulfilling experience. Like, nah, if I'd have went through, I'd have been, been, been annoyed. The fact that I was watching, I gave him three hours of my time. Granted, I was playing hyper light a little bit, too, and stuff, and talking to Deontay. It was just the fact that I'm like, this junk ain't needed to be watched, bro. Even if some mm-hmm. of the awards they was given, they just said it like real quick, like some like most action and adventure, Zelda, like most sports or whatever, like what is it, racing mm-hmm. or sports or whatever, or is it? so it just was like, yeah, it, it it wasn't dramatic or anything. They just kept saying it was just talking and stuff like that. It's kind of weak, basically. Is what I'm getting. Yeah, and um, like I said, the the, the way the they. The way they didn't televise, and I don't know, Josh, you were you were busy, right? You didn't wasn't able to watch it live, correct? Yeah. Boy, sleep. No, I didn't watch it live. I watched this stuff after. Okay. Well, um, so the pacing, how they did the awards, how they just put up cards on the side and just said who the winners were, they didn't let them speak. I feel like this moment was was stolen from them a little bit of being able to show that they were cut above the rest and they why they were developed in that way and kind of giving out those messages that really matter about why we we love gaming so much um i feel like that was kind of stripped away anyway um so yeah it just felt like a very long ad obviously there was some good highlights in there and i think Jeff and the team just needs to go back to the drawing board on about how they want to present these awards and what manner and what type of pacing they want to try to achieve. We obviously don't need the Muppets there. We don't need all these Hollywood folks. That's not a part of the games and, you know, industry in that way. Um, I get having big names come out on the stage and being, um, thoughtful and like having actually some type of connection to the gaming industry um and i don't want to i don't nobody's trying to ban them but for some, some actually some reason online people are trying to ban actors from coming to freaking game awards i'm just like bro it's a medium for telling stories just like this i understand y'all don't want it to be like a celebration of them but at the same time they can like games and be an actor dude Y'all are being a little weird. Like, all people in games are actors. I don't know if you know this. They do do both. They don't usually just stick around to act in video games. They do act in movies. And sometimes I just feel like people don't really understand that. Um, And I get that what Jeff is trying to do is trying to blend the thing. But I think it was just way too much time on people that just... You know, not washed, but come on, man, get get Kojima off the stage. I'm tired of him for ten minutes. He he wasted a lot of time with him and Jordan Peele just showed nothing. Um, and and then it's kind of like I understand you cater to the people that really are influential in the gaming community, but 
I didn't see no hard developers. I didn't see no head of, you know, um, Xbox, head of um, Sony, head of, of Nintendo up there. I didn't see any people that actually matter in the gaming industry. I just felt like I understand these people might not be available, but, um, you know, it, it just felt like it was a lot of um, it was a lot of one sidedness to this to this one. Um, and I, I think that they can do a lot better than what they did. So. Um, yeah, the problem is Jeff. He he is successful. Like he's a good, you know, good at business. But yeah, he's trying to get everything in one, like everything in this one night, this three hour show. It doesn't need to be three hours like the Oscars, especially if it's not actually an award show because you're not going to spend a lot of time on the awards. Yeah. Um, so it's ads. half. Yeah, it's ads. It's it's trailers for new games, and then. A couple of words thrown in there um so i don't know i mean obviously they need the ads they need the money and that's the reason mm-hmm. why the, the event is still growing because they're getting money so it, it, it there needs to be a better balance though because it, it's obvious that the reward the awards are a lot of times an afterthought it feels mm-hmm. like um if i mean if you got too many categories don't include them because i don't i don't know if you we need five different esports categories and, and yeah, you know, Twitch people and stuff. Like, it's cool to shout those people out, but you don't have even time to have them come out on stage. So it's like, you you it, if you have an hour and a half, make it your best hour and a half. It doesn't need to be three hours. Um, yeah, that that mode was way too long, bro. Like, it literally felt like people come up on stage. They like, yeah, I like to think that. Yeah, yeah, get off the stage. You got an ad cover. You <laughs> like, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to talk. They like, one, two, ten. All right, that's enough ad cover, bro. Move. Like, it literally felt like I'm just like, all right, bro. I don't even. Yeah. And so I would I would definitely say that the show itself was like a D. But no, the, the uh, award show aspect of it was like a D. The actual game reveals, I would say more of a C um, because I think. <clears throat> Sony and Xbox have made a, a effort to like, oh, we're gonna show you gameplay, or we're gonna let you know wh- what's a world premiere and stuff like that. And the Game Awards uh, a lot of times slips back into that space where, oh, we're gonna show you three trailers in a row from a Chinese company you never heard of, and they're all CG trailers. Not to say that the game not can't be good or is anything wrong with those developers, but that whole section just kind of like glazes over because like I, i've only seen like I've, I've seen a couple anime ladies flying around with swords and i can't tell you which game was which because you know i didn't see any real gameplay mm-hmm. um, so th- so that's my only beef with the actual uh, reveal some of them were good but a lot of them i feel like just glazed over um but yeah yeah, and wherever Super Mario Bros. Wonders was, you could have put Hogwarts Legacy, period. I feel like there was a lot of shunning of stuff. I think it was a lot of that, too. Um, and I get it, but well, best game direction. Yeah, I mean, some Hogwarts. stuff no, like Spider-Man yeah. didn't win anything, and people were heated, so... <laughs> I don't think they just. I don't. That is not. That's not controversial to me, honestly. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. I feel like there was much better games out there than that one. But I understand them not getting anything is a little insane, especially when you had seven nods. Um, they got to go talk to Nicki Minaj about that. Um, it's just a lot of that stuff is just like you know, it. I I feel like there was a lot of this decisions made beforehand that kind of helped them create this very much so predictable show um and that's fine i just i just i just didn't like how it was presented because truly the way i was going into the award show was i didn't care about the award winners because I knew who was going to win. I didn't care for them to like showcase it. I wasn't surprised. I wasn't interested. But it felt like they knew it wasn't going to be interesting. So they kept trying to rush everybody off the stage. I'm like, their stories matter when they win and their conversation. What they had to go through 
the stuff that's been happening in this year, all that stuff is important. So if they need to get some of that stuff off their chest, let them take that time. They won something. They actually accomplished something. So it felt like not only did the the, 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 the players not care about this award show because of the lack of actual surprises or even like true challenges. It was also the lack that the game awards cared about the winners of that and the challenges. So it, it, it just felt like, um, yeah, the players and the what's name were on the same page, but it just felt disgusting to watch. So, um, they need to definitely tone that down, the, the speed of which they kind of do that. But we're going to talk about some of the winners. If you guys weren't aware, Game of the Year was won by Baldur's Gate 3, um, which I, I honestly, that was no surprise to me. We're going to probably go over the biggest categories. Best Game Direction was won by Alan Wake 2. Best Narrative by Alan Wake 2. Best Art Direction, Alan Wake 2. Uh, best Score of Music. Final Fantasy 16, Best Audio Design, Hi-Fi Rush, Best Performance, Baldur's Gate 3, Neil Newbin, um, Games for Impact was Tachia, um, we had Best Ongoing Game, Cyberpunk 2077, which I think Fortnite should have got that, Best Indie Game, Sea of Stars, um, Best Debut Indie Game, Cocoon, and then we had um, a few others. Best action game being Armor Core 6. Best action adventure game being Zelda. Best RPG, Baldur's Gate 3. Best fighting game, Street Fighter 6. Best family game, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Um, best sport racing, Forza Motorsport. Best simulation, Pikmin 4. Best multiplayer game, Baldur's Gate 3. Um, but there was like, like I said, like a lot of these categories um, were not televised. So it was just them getting up there and kind of talking through it. So, but yeah, I mean, it was the Baldur's Gate 3 show, Alan Wake 2 show. It wasn't really a much in between there. It was, it was pretty much those. And, and, and rightfully so. I'm glad a horror game is getting this recognition. Obviously, they had to do a lot to get to this space. Um, but there's only been two entries, real two real entries. Alan Wake 1, Alan Wake 2. It's not like they had to have a story that kind of... It, you know what? They did have to have a story that cultivated multiple games because they had Control, they had uh, Rem, uh, Quantum Break in there. It had so many different arching things. It wasn't super important, but it made the game feel whole in like a universe. So... Um, not only did they have to have those secondary, those early entries to kind of make it feel as a true success that it was, but they had to graphically push the limit and they had to tell a great story and narrative. Um, and I think they did that, but um, I think um, the same thing could be said um, for a lot for a lot of the games, but I think they could just cut above the rest, which is fine. Baldur's Gate 3, I'm going to definitely try it at some point. And Honestly, I might. I don't know. It depends on how well it plays on the Steam Deck, but I might get that mug on the Xbox. Uh, I think that the um, Steam Deck runs it really well, pretty well, though. So I think I might stick with the PC for that one. Plus, it's sixty nine ninety nine on there. I'm like, y'all gouging, bro. What's going on here? I thought it was fifty nine. Nah, it's well, seven. It's seventy on um. Mm -hmm. It's seventy on freaking Xbox, but it's only fifty nine ninety nine on PC. So yeah, they hit you that might, the uh, deluxe that, edition. If, uh, you yeah, know, that console tax, bro. So <laughs> yeah, it's y'all tripping. Ah, tripping. What's going on here? But yeah, um, but those were the winners. Those were some of the nominees. I mean, I didn't talk about the nominees. Um, but we talked about that last time. Like I said, this was a very predictable show. I wasn't really. You know, I know you said that you, there are some games that should have been nominated, but uh, were there any games that were nominated that you feel like should have won? Like, or like, you know, if Baldur's Gate three is like the the sure winner, but you think something else uh, was deserving of? Um, I think um, game of the year would have been equally deserving between Baldur's Gate or Alan Wake two. Um. I don't think I think it could have went into either way. I think Baldur's Gate Three is just a game of the 
it's just more of a of a games game, like a game with a generation game. Like you can replay that for a long, long time. So I think that that is, helps it get the nod more. Um, Alan Wake Two is more of a one and done, but it's a true solid experience. You know, uh, I think Baldur's Gate Three wins simply because of Alan Wake's two niche. Like if that was like, um, like like even a one and done, like Red Dead or something. That would have probably beat Baldur's Gate, but since it's, since it's like a horror, a lot, a lot of niche to it, like it's horror survival, you know, that kind of makes it hard to yeah. to kind of get there. But I think their their ability to kind of create a game in that way and actually get it to a space where it is being noticed this well is is kind of impressive. So. Um, I think for that one, it would have it could have been between them two. I think best game direction could have definitely been between uh, Alan Wake two and Baldur's Gate three again. Um, only one I would say is Legend of Zelda um, because their the game direction and design is just off the charts when it comes to that game. Um, I think they should have won that one over best action adventure game. I think there was plenty of other. Uh, that could have won. That was like the only thing that kind of threw me. Everything else I knew. Best score, Final Fantasy 16, obviously. Best art direction, I thought that was going to be Alan Wake 2. Guess what it was? Alan Wake 2. Um, best audio design, I thought it was going to be Dead Space Remake because of every, there's the nostalgia there, but Hi Fi Rush, understanding that they had to kind of create that game around sound and how everything moved, that makes total sense. It wasn't a surprise. Um, Baldur's Gate 3, best performance, I honestly didn't know who provided the better performance between him and Melanie and I, I guess they chose Neil um, honestly Cameron was great Idris Elba was great Ben Starr was great um, I didn't play Marvel Spider-Man yet but um, I think the one that kind of meant the most to me was Melanie's uh, but Neil got it I'm not really upset about that either I think obviously there's a reason why Neil Newbin was one of the uh, voice acting and um, one of one of the nominees there um best ongoing game after i thought about it a lot cyberpunk putting out that 2.1 update yeah they deserve it but fortnite just did their whole lego fortnite thing i'm like that is like a legit minecraft contender and they just dropped it like no, no fanfare no nothing it was just kind of like we're gonna we're, we're putting something major in this game and i kind of want to try it i downloaded fortnite just for it um so you know, I, 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 that's the only one I was like a little decisive. Like, how did they, how did they get that nod? But at the same time, I understand how much, you know, Cyberpunk has come back for, you know. But yeah, what are y'all thoughts? I mean, anything that surprised you? I, I mean, like, anything that y'all felt like, oh, could have, I, or like really strongly about anything? Cause that's where I'm looking for. I'm looking for strong opinions. And honestly, I ain't got none. <laughs> <laughs> Any strong opinions from you folks? I mean, you know, right now it's a little hard to be mad about anything because, like you said, a lot of the games that were nominated were like Baldur's Gate three. Like when that mm. game hit, like that all overnight, it's the game everybody talking about for like the yeah, month. and it just changed, you know, the whole conversation for the whole year. It's like, yeah, it was I like, mean, what it, are you as good as Baldur's I Gate three, basically? Like, yeah, <laughs> That's Spider what Man it was. was that it game for the you know people was waiting for. Um, so uh, no, most of them I agree with. Best ongoing game was like a weird category because it had like mm -hmm. this, and that game is not like yeah, I have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> but no, that wasn't best ongoing. That was community support. Ongoing, okay. they didn't have it in there. Yeah, that 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 was tragic when I saw that. Um. um but yeah, Fortnite is always doing stuff, but I, I always forget a lot of these categories are fan voted as well. Um, yeah. So has some influence where Fortnite community is not happy about something. Whereas like yeah. generally the uh, Cyberpunk is positive. Everybody's got positive pictures about it. Yeah. I think that the overall part of it is just simply um, it was very predictable and that is a that's a that's a problem but is it really when you have like this much this year of high truly 
standing out games. I don't think that's the problem. I think it was just more so, um, again, um, them not only knowing that it wasn't a matter, but them treating it like it didn't matter. That's the problem to me. Uh, so yeah. But let's talk about what actually was shown, because they did show a lot. Um, God of War Ragnarok is getting some DLC. It is a roguelike. Um, it's coming in like five days. It is um, called Road God of War Ragnarok Valhalla. Totally free. Um, but it is a roguelike mode where you go through and you kind of um, die and get better and die and get better. So um, it's interesting to see them take on that. Um, and I want to see how they do it. I was really hoping for some story beats or some like something. Um, I see a little bit of mo caption they did, but I don't know if it was a lot. Hopefully, um, we get a little bit of some story so that we can check that out. But uh, yeah, God of War Ragnarok. Uh, yeah, I know y'all still ain't played it. Uh, no, I haven't played Ragnarok. I, I mean, I like 2018, like uh, waiting on that PC release. Um, but I, I read the PlayStation blog and they were saying that there are some story stuff, but I don't, I don't know if it's extensive, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a blog of the story, um, play as Kratos here in Valhalla and, you know, maybe you might get a, like, a little tease or whatever for, uh, what they go for next. Mm. It's free, which is cool. Uh, last yeah. was $10. You know what I mean? You know, they had a couple more improvements, but they also added road like mode. But they needed that ten dollars. <laughs> yes, they need that ten dollars. Um no, I'm happy that they didn't charge anything for it. Um and it's cool to be able to get some of that type of stuff to kind of visit your favorite games again. Um but I, I am I was hoping for some like story DLC like they do for Horizon. Like Horizon came out and was able to give that and I think I think that came out after. I don't know, but I'm I'm I was hoping for some story DLC, so maybe we get something down the line. It just doesn't make sense for them to have to build another game to tell another story. I think they could tell a decent story within the, within some DLC. So, um, but maybe they don't want to do that. I don't know. I just think that it would be um smart for them to do that. But maybe they're just working on the next entry. You know, God of War, such and such. I don't know. But um, I would think that they could milk that a little bit longer. I mean, they do it for everything else, right? You know, I mean, we, we, I mean, Last of Us we got now. Um, I think that they can do it for them. And it's actually meaningful. I, I still haven't beaten Burning Shores, but it's really good DLC. Um, I still need to, like, go back and do it, though. But I just haven't had the time. So. Uh, but yeah, they had, we had that, then we kind of moved over to some awards, but the next thing we saw was Hellblades 2 gameplay. Um, I'm not going to say it didn't impress. I just was like, man, I wish this camera would bag up a little bit so I could see more of the world. I hate the, how strong like you know how you start action scenes and the you know the, the camera will expand out a little bit, but even when she was doing her action scenes, the camera was still tight, and, and that's how it was before. Um, but they built a beautiful world. I think they should show it off. So I think that is my only concern with that. Is just like uh, I really wish I would get away from keeping the camera so tucked and close to her body. It just feels a little bit claustrophobic. A little bit, you know, rise son of Rome. When I know y'all have the capabilities of pushing that FOV, so that is really my only complaint. What What was your thoughts, or if if you saw it, Josh, of the trailer um, that came out? Um, did you see anything that kind of caught your eye? All of it was captured on Xbox Series X, of course. Uh, yeah. So I thought it looked good, like uh, story wise and graphically, obviously. Mm the game the first one i liked a lot um and yeah it was very claustrophobic but the exploration is elements i did enjoy like you said see the world and stuff like that um mm -hmm. i feel like they're really really focusing on those story moments where you know she's really you know down in the mud uh, mm -hmm. getting beat up 
And, you know, that's going to happen a lot through the story. It happened a lot in the first one. And I think it's effective, but yeah, if it's overdone or if it's actually, like, if they want you to feel claustrophobic, it works. But at moments where you want your player to have a little freedom and fight and stuff like that, you got to loosen it up because it's not a movie. Mm-hmm. So it has to be fun to play. Um, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be good. My only uh, worry now is because it's taken so long. Um, I think the first game came out before the war on PS4. Yeah. That game really pushed like cinematics and combat and uh, transitioning between them and stuff like that. And so it, I think it raised the bar for this type of game where it's a you know, mm-hmm. linear, single player, small world, really story focused with some combat. God of War does that really well. And I'm not saying that it has to be better than God of War, but. If God of War and other games like it have pushed the bar so much, then it could feel outdated if they just, you know, if they're not innovating fast enough. This yeah. game's been in development forever. So, yeah. Oh, okay, but so far, I haven't seen anything actually bad about it. And I, I really like the first one, so I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. I feel like that's um, another reason why I bought the Xbox on like, these types of games. Sometimes it just don't work right. Um, so it's it's there's a, there's a few things that I'm looking forward to playing that I want to make sure I have a good experience on. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think there's a lot of potential for it to disappoint. But I mean, not sorry. I think there's a lot of potential for it to not disappoint, but there's also some things that I feel a little. I'm a little worried about. I don't want it to be more Rise of Rome than it is God of War esque. It has to still be a game, but at the same time, um, I feel like they are only showing off the the amount of detail and the amount of world building. I think the those remember that super cinematic opening shot that they did when they were fighting like the huge almost attack on titan style um thing it just felt like they were pushing the boundaries of what they could do in this world and what they wanted to show but then after that i've been seeing that camera get tighter and tighter around the character and i'm just like um yeah this world is way too detailed for you to just be making me focus in on those those but like um, I understand for a combat aspect, like maybe you want those fights to feel, you know, you know, hit hard and truly are engaging. But once that's over, man, you gotta let me walk. You gotta let me move around. You can't have me stuck, like feeling like I'm just walking a walking simulator. So that's what I yeah, don't want. I'll say that um, the yeah. game has. So the first one, I didn't mind the combat being simple. Like it, yeah. it did what it needed to do, and the game was cheap and. I feel like it it fit for that budget. Um, yeah. But for this now, they're going to have to actually really develop the combat and things like that because, you know, they wanted it to be claustrophobic in the first one because, you know, they gonna, you got your voices in your head going to scream, like, mm-hmm. turn around. So you feel claustrophobic and you got to pay attention to the voices and stuff like that. But that that mechanic has to be developed where you feel like you're actually i mean god of war does the same thing where atreus will um, behind you yeah (laughs) yeah behind you but you have a lot i mean even god of war is not like i don't think it's like the deepest combat but it's Mm. a still more developed version of that idea and Mm -hmm. hellblade has to like make sure at least is catching up to what's been put down (laughs) yeah I just think that that's it's it's imp- yeah I think that's a super important so um for it not to just be dismissed as just another game I really think that they they have the material there to make it awesome it's just you know getting to that point so we'll see we'll see what happens um but yeah I think that's I think that's what concerns me the most um because, you know, you're tired of seeing them put out duds or stuff that's not really received. And um, I think that this is one of those games that could be definitely well received. So um, outside of that, 
let's move over to Kamuri. Um, there's not much to tell you about the game. I just like the art style really a lot. If you got a chance, go check it out. It is a, um, I'm pretty sure it's an action game. Um, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, it looks like, well, the, the developers is the Unseen Studio. This is their first game. They, mm -hmm. um, it's the head of the studio used to be with, um, a lot of people like she was in yeah, Platinum Capcom, Game, Platinum, Capcom, Tango. Uh, yeah, worked on Ghostwire Tokyo and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The concept looks like, I mean, they didn't actually show the uh, gameplay, but um, mm -hmm. the concept seems like we're going to take some Jet Set Radio, like in Part mm -hmm. 4 and stuff like that, and mix it with some kind of Ghostwire Tokyo stuff where you're in the city, but there are ghosts and they're. Not not just ghosts, but ghosts and Oni and stuff like magical stuff going on in the city. Um, so I think it it could be interesting. I'm look, looking forward to seeing more of it. Um, mm -hmm. It it's cool that they actually have announced it because I think they formed the studio like five years ago. Oh, you know? yeah, because they announced it at the Game Awards that um, they're a new studio. New studio. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I, like I said, I really love when they when you when you got a lot of style in your game, and it's that that's really leading the, the the innovation and not just you know graphical push. So um, I'm interested in seeing what they do with that and seeing where how it how it plays. Um, I kind of don't want it to be a a multiplayer game. I kind of want it to be single player, but we'll see what happens there. I've seen six different people. Um. Which tells me you're gonna be, you know, fighting alongside. And I'm like, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't go down the Suicide Squad um, path. <laughs> do something different. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that was pretty interesting and looked interesting. Um, you know, and then we had the Sega, you know, trailer where it showed off like crazy taxi, just the radio. Those are the only ones I kind of recognize. The other ones were, um, I'll try to remember their names, but it was like Night. six. Oh, yeah. Of Rage. Yeah. And it, it was, oh yeah. Streets of Rage. Um, and it was like two others. Yeah. So I, I thought that was really cool to get like getting some remakes for those, but the only ones I'd probably be playing is Crazy Taxi and Jesse Radio because the only ones I actually liked. Um, but, we did just get that cyber, uh, like a cyberpunk, cyberfunk, or something like that. Um, kind of like a Jet Set Radio remake, sort of, but it's not um, the same company or nothing. Uh, so I wanted to see how that compares. Uh, a lot of people were probably positive on that game that came out, um, the cyberpunk game. So um, it's it's cool to see that they're bringing back those styles of games, those arcade style games. Like we, I miss those arcade style games. Um, I was very happy when Tony Star, uh, Tony Hawk, uh, came out again. Pro Skater One and Two. Um, I now own that game on all three consoles because they gave it away for free. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I still enjoy it. I still like it. It runs really well on the on Steam Deck. Um, so yeah, I mean, those types of games were my bread and butter when I was growing up. And I'm 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 glad that they are bringing some of that stuff back, and they're putting a push back on having fun in games. You don't have to push the realism, but having some fun to break up the monotony is um really really fun. I leave those for the GTAs in the world of you know pushing realism, but I really want to have some fun in games um sometimes too. So, um, but yeah, that was another one that was really really cool. Any thoughts on that, Josh? Um, yeah, the Sega reveal was, uh, it, it's good to see that, yeah, they're going back to their classic, uh, IPs, because a lot of those games, um, you know, haven't seen in a, in a very long time, and, mm -hmm. um, they're good, and they're fun, and Sega has a lot more than just Sonic, and, uh, for sure, and they I got Zombies I Revenge, I don't even know if y'all remember that on Dreamcast, that was my, that was, that was fun too, it was another arcade game. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, they can do a lot more with those IPs. Uh, so get get people who care about them, put some money into the projects, and release it. Cause Sega is a weird publisher where it's like they come out with Sonic and then Yakuza, and then everything else is kind of like hit or miss. <laughs> push on the man, push to the backside, or yeah, you yeah. might need some smaller games to uh, fill fill out that catalog. Yeah, for sure, and um. And I think that and, you know, Power Stone and remaking some of these older games that were really, really fun and just had some simple stuff to it, you know, giving it a little rehash and, um. They didn't want a uh, Night Into the Dreams remake. <laughs> oh, man. I think there was, what, what was the other one? It was like Power Special Forces. It was another game where you had, like, what was it called? Jalen on the name of it. But I think that was on the PlayStation. But I thought the Sega brought it over to the PlayStation. What was the name? What was the name of that? I don't know. I don't remember. But um but yeah, there was a few games on there that, that, that I felt like um on that list that like, you know. Um I play I think all of them. I didn't love all of the, those games, but like they're all fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say that Shinobi was, which was like the two two D ninja one that they showed. The art style looked really good. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's a, you know it's a two D ninja game. You gonna fight bosses and stuff like that. But if they put like a lot of effort in making the water color world, or however the style they did look very good mm-hmm. and fluent. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to check it out. Um, Shinobi was fun. It's a hard game, but at least it'll be pretty. <laughs> yeah. No, I think there's there's a lot of potential there. Untapped potential. Um, Rise of Ronin. Uh, Rise of Ronin. It was the. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. that thing. That thing was scratchy, dog. I don't know what they figure out. Um, it, it could be early, but I I don't think the trailer was good. It's Koi Tecmo, and they mm-hmm. you know Neo was good for the time, and Neo Two was an improvement. I feel mm-hmm. like you know, they keep going back to that formula and trying to improve on it, but they don't have the polish, or maybe they do it have the same polish as Neo, but they're not improving it. Like this, these are still the same animations from 2016 type thing. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it it they were definitely just not. It didn't seem like because uh, this is a PS5 exclusive, isn't it? Or am I not? Am I tweaking? I could have sworn this was a PS5 exclusive. But this does not feel like the cat the category of game that they would normally do. It just it just felt like an unpolished like like I would just rather play Ghost of Shishim. Like um and I get that their combat is different and they're stylizing and like they do have a certain, you know, process. I just think it's outdated at this point. That gameplay felt and looked like really, really bad. I'm, I'm watching it back just to make sure I'm not crazy. But there was a lot of frame drops. There was a lot of scratchiness in the animation. There was a lot of um, just, you know, weird stuff going on. The hair tethering. The um, It just didn't feel like a polished game at that point. Um, and, and, you know... I think a lot of that just has to do with their whole, their their actual process of making games. It's just you know, it's this it looks very Neo on PlayStation Four. They don't have any. They don't have to. And I'm not saying they have to push the envelope, but you have to have some innovation somewhere. So what is that innovation? Is it just more NPCs on the on the playground? Is there a lot more combat fluidity? But None of that was showcased in that trailer. Um, it was just a bad trailer. But yeah, I think um, they got a a good win with um, Neo. But yes, it's one of those situations where they don't not necessarily that they don't know why it was successful, but they don't know how to innovate on that success. Yeah. Well, it, we didn't expect this win, and we don't know how we got here, but we didn't try <laughs> to you know, keep going because that's what people like. Um, yeah because like you know same thing with wulong and stuff uh i think 
like you said, Ghost of Tsushima was very focused on what it was wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I think if they wanted to make this type of game work, it should have they should have taken it. it. It doesn't need to be Neo in like a different setting, you know. Right. You don't need all the same mechanics and weapon switching and the giant fat guy that's gonna try to grab you and you gonna dodge <laughs> away. Um so, you know, like you say, it might be de- their development process there on Rails, just trying to, like, push out the next game. But yeah, it would be nice if they take a step back and, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, take, it, <laughs> yeah take a step back and try to do something different. But, like I said, they, I, I, I want to give them some grace because they don't have to innovate so much graphically. Like, even in Sekiro, like, you know, that game was stylistic, but also innovative in a lot of, like, what they use for lighting, bloom animations, to make it feel a little bit more modern. It's not like that we're asking for them to reinvent their character models. I'm talking about Apple in- input some actual, you know, modern day technology that would make your game look a little bit more appeasing smoke effects i'm talking you know not having some 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 a nice little um global illumination something that kind of helps it look good but i think they're using the same engine i think it just feels and it just makes it all seem to the samey you know this is like wulong all over again this isn't really special to me i don't know i don't know if you're getting that vibe but that's what i'm getting i'm just getting it not special um so and it can't be scratchy on top of that so it does look scratchy um and when when we say scratchy you just feel like some of the frames were not there and i feel like it was just a little bit too not it was just not polished enough um for it to be the first trailer that you show that show like real real good gameplay so outside of that the, the sequencing of it was fine uh, but what else? What else we got? What else we got? We got um, Dragon Ball Sparking Hero. Actually, um, Jalen said he was not he was not interested in this game, which is interesting. But um, Dragon Ball basically they have like a new what's that? How do you say it? The Tenkachi, ten, the Budokai Tenkachi. Um, they have a new one of those. It's kind of in that, in that same space where you have like um, that over the shoulder f- camera. That that just does take away a lot of the um, competitiveness of the fights. But overall, they got a new game coming out. People are excited about it. It is called Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. It's coming to Xbox, PS5, and I think I saw Steam. Um, and it's coming out next year, I believe. Um, but yeah, that they have another game coming out, and I think a lot of people are excited about it. Um, and I think me and Jayla kind of took the same stance of, yeah, it's cool they got another one coming out, but we, that was one of our favorites. We were more so of the two D fighter Budokai's, um, because it kind of was a little bit more technical, and you can actually really, you know you play them competitively versus those other ones it just felt like more of um our favorites um the naruto storm and uh the new demon slayer and uh all of the other cash grabs you've seen out there for jujitsu kaisen or for my hero academia where they have those arena fighters um that don't really help when it comes to being competitive it's just a lot, a lot about you know who spams the best or who has their the the the, the spacing that you kind of need. It, it, it's not really like as competitive as you would think, like like a a Dragon Ball Fighter Z. So we are looking forward to the next Fighter Z coming down the pipeline. But this one, um, it does feel like it is not going to get the traction, um, at least on our end that we were um. I was looking forward to when I first saw the intro. Um, what are your thoughts on those types of games, Josh? What do you What do you think about those um, arena fighters, or at least the Budokai Tenkachi ones? 
So, I mean, when I was a kid, I loved those games, but, like, they weren't, you know, playing against my friends and my brothers. Um, mm-hmm. You didn't care about balance. They just have 50 characters, and they have people you ain't never seen in the, in the game before. Um, nowadays, I feel like that type of stuff is, is not new. Every anime has a game now, and they all... Yep. <laughs> Not play the same, but they all have a, a similar thing where everybody got their cinematic super and, and stuff like that. So um, I'm I'm over it. I will say though, I will if there's one that's like good enough or interesting enough, I might jump in like one or two every now and then. Like I checked out a couple Naruto games throughout the years. Um, checked out a couple Dragon Ball Z games, and they're they're fun. Mm-hmm. Like I like Universe too. And that's mostly kind of a similar thing where they had a whole bunch of single player content, so I had I could just play it, and it wasn't like super balanced like multiplayer wise, but you could just create your own character, and it had a lot of the, not depth, but it had a lot of like customization to it, like your moves and your look and stuff like that. So it was fun for that sense. Um, mm-hmm. That being said, this one I I don't personally have see the appeal to it because like. If it is a fighting game and it has 50 characters, we've also had 50, 20 other Dragon Ball Z games that had the same characters. Yeah. Xenoverse literally added, like, they still add in DLC characters to this day, I think. Like, they <laughs> every couple months, you know, here's the newest character that you only seen in the manga that came out a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, not literally, but that's what it feel like. Like we we're adding everybody, and um, the whole point of Budokai Tenkaichi was like it's three D and it has every character. So I, even still, I don't see the the point of it. Graphically, it doesn't look bad, um, you know, uh, but they're not gonna do anything interesting with the story. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you know, I mean, story, uh, that we've been playing. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what that's that's where it kind of that's kind of where you leave it. It's not like really any um, it's not even much more you can say on that. It's kind of like they 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 fit a certain market, and it's very much so heavy on just the fan base being interested. Um, kind of similar to when they put out those like very not interesting RPG games, like. When we put out action, um, action adventure games for these for these um, characters, they don't really try to push the envelope. They're just putting out because they know name recognition. They probably sell well. So, um, I'm I'm hoping for something more than that. I'm hoping for something more for the single player or something, uh, maybe a original score, original um, story, maybe something. I don't know, but. Um, something interesting to kind of get people in, engaged that aren't just, you know, seeing a repeat of the Dragon Ball series. Um, but I d- highly doubt that. I think that's going to, I think this is going to be another one of those. Let's reintroduce um, these games and, um, you know, let's, <laughs> let's get this money. So I think that's what's going to happen. Um, yeah. But, oh, oh, um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> No, uh, I was also just going to say, like, I'm. Dragon Ball Z is also tired in the sense mm-hmm. where they keep showing the same. I mean, it's about Goku and Vegeta and Frieza, but, like, mm-hmm. if you show me Goku, Vegeta, and Frieza in your trailer, and then that's it. You, you just wasted your trailer. I already know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we already know their story. We already know what's going to happen. We already know. We are seeing it too many times. I think the surprise effect is introducing the characters that we haven't been introduced to. Some of the maybe the prota- uh, the um, uh, the protagonists or something like that that kind of shows that they're going to be fighting a new threat. Whatever the case may be. I just think just showing them again is, is not helpful at all. Um... But yeah, let's keep it pushing. Like I said, there was a lot that was shown, a lot that was going on there. Um, what else? What else? What else? There was also. Um, I'm not gonna. I don't know. You got if you got anything good to say about Kojima's OD, say it. Because-
because I'm gonna move on. So I, I will say that the reveal was not good. I like that trailer was nothing. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I thought it was cool to actually see Peel and him come out uh, and, and not spend the whole time, but uh, them working together is a cool idea because Jordan Peel he is good at what he does. Yep. And I think Kojima is also good at what he does, but people always like point out that Kojima writes his own stories, and it doesn't feel like he has a, especially since Konami gone, he doesn't have a boss. Any any good or bad idea he has, he put in the game and work with somebody else at least. You know, maybe the stories might be more like they might still be weird, but you know, filters just, through yeah. like, you got a partner, you know, type thing. So that that's yeah. cool. I would say. Um, OD sounds interesting from the original like leaks. They leaked like last year. It's a mm-hmm. horror game. It, they have it like we don't, I don't actually know like all what the mechanics are like, but it's a horror game, and supposedly it's supposed to have some ideas that he had for PT brought, and he finally you know can can do it. That's why at the show he walked out of the door, which was like the recreation of the PT door. So oh, I, that I had cool. no idea. People, yeah, people love PT. Um, he, you know, the game might have been good, might have been bad, but like, it was at least interesting for what I played and revisiting those ideas along with Jordan Peele. It seems like an interesting idea. Um, who knows what the game is actually like or when it's ever going to come out. Um, but, you know, that, that's all I got. <laughs> yeah. Um, I ain't got much good to say, so I'm gonna just keep going because I don't want to be a negative Nancy. Um, so outside of that, um, we saw the first Berserker. Um, and this one was, you know, more along the lines of those anime style games, uh, very much so giving me vibes of Tales. Um, but honestly, I haven't. I don't know much about the Berserker universe, so I'm interested in intrigue oh. simply from that aspect outside of, like, I only know Guts, you know, and his storyline. I don't oh, no, know anything it's not Berserk. It's not the Berserk anime. Oh, it's not? Um, nope. It's, so, there's a, on, like, basically there's a gacha game called uh, Dungeons and Fighters and some like, Dungeon Fighter Online. Um, anyways, definitely not just, it's a Chinese game that's popular. It's 2D, you beat up people and you unlock characters. Uh, last year they made a fighting game called DNF Duel, um, which you might have seen on Steam or so with that because it, it was actually pretty popular. But DNF Duel, and basically every character is a, is a class. So instead of being like Dante, mm-hmm. he'll just be called Swordsman, and that's a character. And so Berserker is one of the characters. And they're just making a game about one of their characters. So um, I would say it's like the it's a big IP like Overwatch and, and League of Legends, but it's just from China, so you ain't never heard of it unless you was like into that scene. <laughs> yeah, because it says it got like eight hundred and fifty million players worldwide. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool for them. Um, me, yeah, I'm I'm very much so not interested yeah. at all. Now. That being said, I think the game looks. Cool. I think it looks better than I would say my expectations for this type of game, where it's like a tie-in to another, um, yeah, you know, IP. Uh, but you know, is it better than other games of his style? I don't know, but style-wise, I think it it, it looked well, it looked good. Yeah, my interest was solely into the story. Like I, I'm. I'm not gonna say I just my that just changed my mind. It's just more so, yeah. I was very much so more interested in the story than I was in the gameplay because the gameplay seemed very much so similar to any type of Soulsborne um game, but in this animated style, which is cool and unique in itself. Um, but I'm not looking for that right now. Not the type of game um I was looking forward to the story. So. It's fine. Um, it does look really stylized. It does look really good. I don't know why it's not showing that it's going to be on PlayStation. It's just saying Xbox right now. Um, maybe it is an Xbox exclusive, but um, boy, do I tell you who sucks at my marketing Xbox. Um, but 
yeah, I, I I give it a shot if it's on Game Pass. Um, but I think that they at least provided a lot of interesting um, character design, and um, I might have to check out DNF to see if it might be something I really want to look into because their character design looked really cool in my opinion. So. Okay. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? We had some other stuff. It was the Apex Legends X Final Fantasy collab. Um, I really like this. I just don't like Apex Legends, but I like that they have that um, collab. I think this is the first collab I've ever seen them do with a real other gaming company. I, I, I don't think I think that's pretty safe to say. Um, but it looked it really good, and I I was really like enjoying the them having <laughs> uh crypto having that. I was like, wow, I did not expect that. Um, I don't know if it's an heirloom or what, but it might just be a crossover, like gameplay wise, like you be able to pick it up for um a little bit, and then that's end of it. I like this can't be an heirloom. Um. But yeah, I thought it was a pretty surprising. I think they picked a weird company to to label it with. I think um, Apex Legends is big, but I don't know if they already already are in Fortnite. I think this was like a more of a Fortnite thing. But it's interesting they went with Apex. So we'll see how that looks and how it goes. Apex is uh, popular here in Japan. Like it's one of the top like streamed games. I don't know if it's like the biggest, but if they they popular now, that's somebody experience likes Apex, so that's what Apex is. I think. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, well, it was it's cool to see for sure. Like this is like their very first one. Like outside of the Post Malone, they don't really they didn't really collab with anyone. They just steal the idea and make it look like it, like they did with that One Piece skin for. Um, <laughs> they did an anime collection event. And none of them people signed off on any of it. Um, but, you know, let's see what this does and how this goes and maybe some future down the line. Um, but, yeah, then the biggest thing of all, y'all, I'm going to take up another 20 minutes just talking about this. But Marvel's Blade from Arcane Lion was dropped. Um and that was probably the biggest thing for me where it was like um kind of jaw dropping i was like wow i did not expect that at all um still showed that Mar Mar um microsoft don't know how to market i don't know if it's this game is exclusive i don't even know if this game is like um i don't know what they're doing with it to be honest i don't know if it's exclusive or if it's like multi-plat um barely even wanted them to show that it was xbox so i'm like are they gonna drop this independently from xbox because it definitely didn't show their name on there at all um it was a very weird um trailer but not the not the trailer itself but just how they presented it because they are under microsoft now they have been a lot longer than activision so i really don't understand this whole this whole thing like this scenario what, what we're seeing right now it just doesn't make sense um and nobody's talked about it so it just doesn't feel it feels weird so um maybe it is one another one of those things where they have some stuff in the tuck for playstation and it might be one of those things where <laughs> maybe it's playstation exclusive i don't know but it just seems very weird that they didn't say anything about it but highlights marvel blade has a game coming out it's a third person action game set in paris um and i think they did a i think they they, they captured the aesthetic of a of a of a of a blade game so at least in that trailer it felt like they really understood what that what that character is and what he kind of means um and i think they're gonna do a good job i think they're gonna do it justice um but yeah, I, I I was really excited about it. They didn't have to show gameplay. They just had to show that it is in development. And we're going to let them, you know, 
continue to create. But overall, that was probably the highlight of the of the event for me. It just means a lot to me. Like I said, Blade was my favorite character uh, for a long time before I even thought about like Marvel or DC or anything like that. I just thought he was really cool. So I would watch that movie a lot. I remember I bought Blade 2 on the PlayStation 2. That game was trash. But um, I enjoyed it because I was able to, you know, run around and be a... That was like the first action game I had played. And I remember the gray and, you know, having Wesley Snipes on there. Um, And, you know, it's just stuff like that stick out to you. I don't know how I was able to buy that game, but my mama bought it and I was able to play it. and I just enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to to being able to go back and revisit it in a, a new space um, and see what it is. And I, I think that um, I think I, I think this is going to be a, a really big and important game. And I think Arcane being Arcane can tell a good story. I really want them to elevate to the level of Insomniac of telling the story with the already built material. Um, I really don't want them to kind of do their own thing. I want them to kind of tell that story within that realm and kind of really showcase that character and put put some um, value behind it. Um, and I don't see how they couldn't be able to do that. I think they're very stylistic. I think they're very um, they're 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 multifaceted. I think they can do a lot. So, um, in my opinion, their gunplay has always been decent. They just now need to elevate their sword play, and now it's going to be in third person, so we might be able to finally see some true animation work from them. Um, because, like I said, Dishonored, Dishonored 2, they had great animations, but it was all first person. Prey being a great game as well. I don't know if Arcane Lion made Prey, but um, I don't remember. But I, I know that they, you know, yeah. So I, I know that they have really good combat in there and the style of the, the the enemies is really stylistic and like they have like good animations. Um, but, you know, you never see your character. So now being able to see your character open up that space a little bit more, I want to really see what they can do with that. So I'm super interested. Um, what's your thoughts or your thoughts, uh, Josh? Yeah, um I, it seems like a really good idea for them to do it because, like, with a lot of Marvel games, uh, you worry about who the developer is going to be because, like, not everybody's style is going to fit the character. But mm-hmm. I think uh, the Dishonored style will fit perfectly for Blade because I, I never played, like, I played a little bit of, like, Dishonored 1, but the games are always interesting, but I don't like first person stuff that much um but their powers and the level design and stuff like that was always interesting so mm-hmm. uh taking that and expanding on it in a in a third person way and with a you know vampire um and stuff like that will be cool and i like blade too um like i'm interested to see how they they approach him and like his stories mm-hmm. and character and stuff like that because uh like I only knew Blade from the movie, uh, you know, like you said with what what's this night? But yeah, that was like me too. Blade in a couple other stuff, like in a couple other games, like Midnight Suns and stuff. And I guess that version is more comic book accurate, mm. where it's like, oh well, he was actually born not in the seventies, like he was in the movies. He was born a long time ago, and mm. so just like actually learning more about him uh, was cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see how they portray him. Yeah. Not a lot, well, there are a lot of uh, black superheroes uh, with his pedigree, because I think people know Blade. Um, yeah. It's been a long time since we had like, good depic- depictions. Not not bad ones. But, like It's been a long time. He hasn't, he's not like oversaturated like Spider-Man, so it's still a lot they can do with the character. So, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, when they finally bring out that Marvel Blade movie, I think that's going to be a huge hit. So having this tie in with that would really help with the success. And um, yeah, I'm ready for it. So biggest thing for me, for sure. I honestly thought when they first showed it, it was Redfall DLC. And I was about to just blow my brain. I was like, bro, why would y'all even try with this game? 
So I was like, the vampire? I said, hold up. And then I saw him put that blade on his back. I said, man, don't tell me. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, but, you know, this is this is one of those Wolverine things. You ain't going to see much after this. This is it. <laughs> You're not seeing much until like 2028, 2027, um, which sucks. But I think that's how long it's going to take. It'll be like 2027, 2028, which is crazy how how we're past the 2000s and into the 28s and 29s and the 30s. Ooh, you know, man. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be a fun one for sure to keep an eye on. And um, I'm looking forward to them clearing up whether or not this is going to be some type of. Um, I think they look at their books. I don't know what's happening, but if this is going to be exclusive or not, uh, I think people yeah. should be able to know that. I think that it's a little in distaste to not know what it's going to be. I understand it ain't coming out no some, time uh, soon, but it's some this lawyer ring going on right now. Somebody yeah, in the ear. Yeah, like, more than likely is you got this. You know. <laughs> yep. But it's I mean, more than likely if like it that. Was, they started a while ago, which it probably was with like Marvel, you know. Yeah, they probably sealed in a long time ago. If it is on PlayStation, you know, maybe they haven't talked about should it be on PlayStation or it is, but when it come out and all that type of type of stuff, they, cause they gotta. They I mean, probably yeah, renegotiating yeah. with Marvel mm-hmm. right now, talking about how they don't want it to be on the other consoles. Y'all gave exclusivity to them, give me this exclusivity to us. So I think that there is probably some other talks there too. Um but we'll see what happens. I think it's weird that they didn't show anything over in regards to it. They didn't want to tie it to Xbox at all. So it's weird because that is a Xbox owned developer. So it's very weird. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, you know, it's more stuff to be talked about, dude. I mean, this is a big, big day for the gaming community. Um, yeah. Monster Hunter Wilds. Josh, get in your bag, yeah. man. Talk, tell, tell the people mm-hmm. about Monster Hunter Wilds. I don't know nothing about. I mean, obviously, it's it looks like it's the uh the second coming of a uh, Monster Hunter Worlds, but. Do you think? Did you see anything that you that stood out to you outside of like the sand animations and how they kind of pushed it all back? I was like, okay, we're gonna be fighting some desert sand storms up in this book. Um, yeah, but uh, there's only three like main things in the trailer uh, that mm-hmm. I noticed. It, um, yeah, they push in weather and the environment. Um, Monster Hunter World was like very big environments it wasn't technically open world but it was very big environments where you felt like you had more space to play around and enemies doing like you know more like living in the environment but they're supposed to i don't know if it's going to be completely open world but yeah they're pushing that further the second thing is enemy like like not complexity density Mm -hmm. having a whole bunch of animals and herds of like little sheep things running around and stuff like that. Um, just to, you know, again, uh, fill out that emergent thing because, like, that's one thing that people like a lot about my son of the world that actually feels like a environment with these, that, you know, monsters live in. Personally, mm. I thought it, like, detracted from the gameplay, but it's, it'll be nice if they can still keep that element where the world is feels lived in, um, but the gameplay is still good. Uh, the last thing is um, the character has that like he's writing on his little animal thing, but uh, in his backpack he has mul- multiple weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, which, that's something that Monster Hunter has been slowly moving to. I don't know if you'd be able to switch on the fly or something like Don't Make Cry, but uh, at least in Rise, you can easily just like go back to your base. So in the old games, you got to quit out the mission change all that out, go back into the mission. Um, in Rise, you can just go back. While you're in the mission, you can go back to your little home base, switch out your stuff, and then go back up. So it, it seems like they're even making it a little bit easier where you always got some stuff with you at all times so you can, um, you know, approach stuff differently. If you got the wrong weapon, the wrong element, uh, so quickly switch it up and then go fight. Keep fighting. So mm-hmm. that that's cool. 
quality of life improvements for that type of game are, are big. Uh, yeah, that being said, not much else. 2025, it's Monster Hunter Gen 6. So um, that's usually when they do like big like roster changes, for, like a whole bunch mm-hmm. of monsters like that. It's going to be a while, but it looks good. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not the biggest fan, but I did like Monster Hunter Rise, and I I recently picked up Wild Hearts. I think I'm going to try to play through Wild Hearts simply because I liked it, the style a little bit more um, and like the, flu, the the combat, but it was only $8, so that's why I got it. And um, I'm, I'm interested to see if it takes uh for me to kind of play through a actual monster hunter game because i honestly i want an ending i want it to end i don't really want to play it forever so i think wild hearts will give me that more than uh uh, monster hunter will uh because i don't think they truly like focus on that a lot they just kind of focus on getting you to the end game and then continuing on and i'm not interested in playing a game forever no time soon not like that anyway so um i think i'm a hardest boss yeah, man, yeah. I think I'm going to try to try out Wild Heart, see if I can really um, digest it enough and feel comfortable with that and see if that's something that I would be interested in. But really, I think I gave it enough shots with World Rise. Um, I even played the crossover one. I forget what it was on the, on the 3DS or something like that. But I played enough to know that I'm not interested. <laughs> uh, but... I'm glad for you guys because I think those games are big, huge, and they actually innovate a lot. So I'm happy for that, for sure. Especially everybody was crying about getting a Monster Hunter game, and I'm glad they kind of got one, too. Uh, What else? Oh, and multi-platform is not, you know, much exclusive. So. Yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> Uh, what else we got? Um, I mm-hmm. I I'll be honest. I'm not watching the Final Fantasy VII trailers. They all look amazing, but I'm I'm gonna buy it and just want to wait until the game come out. Um, but yeah, they have more Final Fantasy VII uh remake part two. I forget what it is actually called. What is it like? Re re something. Um. Rebirth. Say that again. Final the... Fantasy Seven. Oh, Rebirth. Re- two. Yeah, Rebirth. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't know the name. It's oh, I, I I hear you say the Final Fantasy Seven part. I was like, hmm, what talking about? Um, but yeah, I think the, the the Rebirth is the only one I'm looking forward to right now. I think that's gonna be the greatest game in the world for next year. I don't think there's gonna be much else competition wise in 2024. I think Rebirth gonna take the cake on the Game Wars next year. To be honest, I feel like they just—it's just gonna be way more expansive, way more um, free, way more openness, um, and it's gonna have a lot more to it. Um, and that's why it's taken so long. It's been four years since the last one, so, um, and I, I'm pretty sure they were making it way before four years. So they probably had most of the parts semi started. Um, but yeah, I think that one's gonna be like one of those take the cake, really expansive, really uh, new, refreshing, and expanded in a lot of ways. That kind of creates it into that its own like little space. It it maybe not win game of the year, but I think it could um, because there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be coming out next year too. Um, but I think this is the one that's that I'm most anticipated. It's obviously the most anticipated by the community because it won the most anticipated game. Um, but yeah, Rebirth is, I, I, I have, well, I don't want to say drink the Kool-Aid because it's bad and that's a bad thing to happen. But, you know, it. I, I am now a part of the Final Fantasy Hive where um, I'm trying to, uh, I, I actually do want to and, and am anticipating that game coming out. Where were we? Where were we? GTA 6. So, GTA 6 recently was announced and um <laughs> it took the took the internet by storm. A lot of it, I mean, I think it got like 100 million views in 20 in like a day or and a half or something like that. Um 
probably the most watched YouTube video out there currently in, in like three day span. It's probably the biggest thing to ever come out and it got leaked. It wasn't even, it didn't even pose to come out that day. It was supposed to come out the next day. It got leaked and it still did those numbers. It's kind of insane. Um, but let's break down the trailer a little bit. Let's kind of talk about what we saw and what I was kind of happy to see when it finally, um, when they finally showed some stuff. I was happy to see real rendering, like actual rendering in the world in the engine because it felt like there was a lot of artifacting, a lot of things that you could see that tells you that it's actually rendered and not. I, 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 I'm not saying that right. Full that was actually in engine. It wasn't like a. It wasn't pre rendered. Yeah. It wasn't pre rendered. Correct. It um. It was actually in engine based off of like some of the hair stuff, some of the actual um, shadows having like jagged edges. Like there was some uh, minor, small um, imperfections that kind of showed you that, hey, this is actually going to be representative of what it looks like. And then they do have a great track record of actually showing in game cutscenes when they reveal stuff. They did that for. GTA 5 and they did it for Red Dead Redemption 2 and it always looked at the same as if it was when it first show, shown off or better so that was one of the bigger things that was like okay that's really important but also the level of quality that they showed off for the Xbox Series X and PS5 is insane I think that that is probably the, the, the most probably the most technically advanced game I've seen in a long time and I think there is a there's other games that have been able to reach that quality, um, but not at this scale. Like This is a large open world simulation of our world. Um, this scale of fidelity is, is, hasn't been seen before. And I already knew it was going to look pretty. Um, to that aspect, no, I didn't think it was going to have like ray chest, ray trace, global illumination. I didn't think it was going to have any of the things that you normally see in these, um, very, cause they're very expensive techniques, but this stuff all looks like they're pushing the envelope and they're doing it in a way that is going to be optimized properly. Um, obviously they got the budget to be able to do the research and make sure their engine is optimized to the, to the fullest T. To make it run well um but outside of optimization i kind of wanted to see where they was going to go with the back end technology the stuff that is built on the stuff that you actually have to go out in um what, like what you're going to be actually engaging with i know josh and them made the joke about um you know pumping gas that's going to be a simul it's going to be a, a mini game for the pumping of the gas or something like that um, I can honestly see it happening. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I can see gas being a big deal because um, it's like so detailed. But um, at the same time, it's it's like there's a there's a mix between fun and, and you know, realism. Um, and I don't know where it ends. I don't know where it blends and I don't know where it stops. I just know that from what I could tell here from this trailer alone is that one, it's going to be bigger and better than anything that has ever come before it. Uh, two, it's going to have a very hard focus on technology in the game world where like cell phones, social media, etc. Basically like our world. Um, and three, that there is going to be a bunch of different locations, um, there a couple of different cities. And you're going to see a lot of variety of people within those cities. It's not just a certain demographic or anything like that. I think it's going to be very representative of our real world melting pot lifestyles. So um, those are my key takeaways. Um, I still think that this is going to be a game that pushes the envelope for most developers. It's going to be a game that makes people uh, wonder how they can innovate and, and, you know, push past GTA. I think there's a lot of games that barely could scratch the surface of a GTA game. And I think that just that 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 uh goal post just got pushed down the field a lot further than most people expected. 
um, just from real time rendering, uh, graphical fidelity to density of world to realism of scale, um, all of it. I think that there's just way too much to be seen in this little 31 minute and 30 seconds. The booty physics was insane. You know, there's there's plenty to talk about. There's plenty to see um, and say. But um, from a technical aspect, from a presentation aspect, everything was right top notch. It wasn't anything that stood out that felt like, oh, they could have did better here. Um, it all felt very uh, streamlined and unique in that way. So. Yeah, I think um, they did a really good job of showcasing that. I think they did a good job of actually um, cutting that trailer because it's a it, it was a minute and thirty seconds, but it was the most packed minute and thirty seconds I've ever seen for a game reveal. So they did a really good job with that trailer for sure. What are okay? Let me let me emphasize this. I don't, I'm not I'm not going to reiterate it, but basically. Uh, Josh and Jalen was not too hot on uh, GTA when it initially was released, uh, or at least was stated. Uh, he said he needed to see more. So now that he saw more, let's hear what Josh has to say um, as of now. Josh, what are your thoughts on the GTA, and has anything changed for you? Um, uh, let me re rewatch this trailer, trailer, make sure I'm watching the same thing. Um... <laughs> but no, the, the world in the trailer looks very uh, good. Like, um, it's it takes place in what Miami, right? Um, yeah, and probably that's what made Miami essentially. The, the vistas look very high quality, lifelike, but they also don't look very like video game because like there are a lot of big open world video games where you can tell like how the detail falls off in the distance. Like mm -hmm. in the trailer. This game, it looks like very good. Mm -hmm. um, I only have well, I have my issue with like the with GTA. Is that I am a GTA hater. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, I I have one issue with like the hype of the game. Like graphically, mm -hmm. I, it, it lives up to the hype. The trailer, I don't think it was bad, but I think it was very uh, reserved. It didn't actually yeah. show show much and so i from that aspect i can't get too hyped off of anything i didn't actually see that was like hype like you know just it was a short teaser um, it mm -hmm. wasn't a bad teaser but it was a teaser so i'm not gonna get hype off the teaser uh it, the the other thing is that like i know rockstar has a a good track record of like making games but it's still to be seen what the game actually is like you, mm -hmm. you it's a simulator they ain't said that, you know, <laughs> um, mm. that, um, you know, they're, they're just things that can and will change between the tra trailer. Like the biggest thing is like if, when you look at that beach and the beach has, you know, a thousand people on the beach like you would see in real life. Um, it would be good if they can match that in the game. But like in what way is this going to change or there going to be. You know, less detail animations, or they're gonna be less people, or they're gonna be copy paste of people. You know, it ideally, I they I know that they want it to be like as realistic and like as like the trailer, but like we already know this game is gonna run at thirty FPS on PS Five, so it's like, uh, you know, what what ways are they gonna be some cutback? You know, not to say that the PS Five can't handle it, but like with current technology, there might be some limitations. Um, so I'm just putting back my expectations. For me, I've I played a bunch of Rockstar games. I right. played Bully, played Hello Noir, Red Red Dead, GTA. I like them. It's just my issue is that they they as they move towards the simulator part, I feel like the games are not as fun to play gameplay wise, movement, mm -hmm. gunplay, and driving. Uh, so with what I want to see from this, which I didn't see in the trailer, is just like, how are you making a gameplay? For? Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I agree with that. Um, in regards to gameplay wise, and how is it going to be interesting and entertaining? Um, I do think that they probably this is the most focused I've seen for a first 
game trailer in regards to like story beat beats. Um, so I do think that it's going to be a lot of a heavier focus on the story presentation um, and how they present itself. Um, in regards to your comments on um, like the world and how much they have to cut back, I honestly don't think they're going to cut back anything. I think it's going to be exactly what it is, what we've seen, simply because the only the last game we got was a PS3 game, and that was GTA V. As a P360 game, we didn't get anything for the PS4, um, and they've been working on this game for that entire generation. Um, and the Resident Evil 2, Red, I mean Red, Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, and the quality thought that they thought that quality was you know special and unique um, at the time, and it was, um, especially be running on those Xbox One, Xbox um, One X, and uh, I don't even think the series was out yet. So those games being able to be pushed on to that limit on those consoles at the time was a feat in itself. So honestly, I don't have a concern about them cutting back anything. I think this is representative of what they're going to actually be showing us and what we're going to be playing because they literally skipped an entire generation for GTA. Um, and I, and uh, uh, I think... Go go ahead. Sorry. Also, as the studios skipped the generation with Skyrim and Starfield had limitations. <laughs> I don't think that they are in the same caliber of studio. I think Starfield was Skyrim saved was by like Xbox. Been selling ever. I said the caliber of studio. I never said their the success. <laughs> as the caliber is like it's like a. I think Xbox even pushed for them to have a better. Um, launch than they would have had initially because they would have probably put it out in a much buggier state. Um, so I, I agree with you, like to temper expectations, but um, I think that their track record of what they show, like if you even go look back at the GTA 5 first trailer, you would see that they are very representative of what they actually put in the game. Um, but Again, I don't, I mean, you don't have to believe it. I'm just more so telling you what I've, what they've seen and what the, the facts are that they didn't have a game for the GTA's franchise on that, on that PS4. And they probably were optimizing it for that hardware. And then once they realized they were going to be moving, moving to the next, they would see what the capabilities of the next one would be. I think over that time frame, their engine got even more optimized, even better. And I think this is a really good representation of what that final product should be um and we'll see if it's not really <laughs> once that game comes out uh but I, I i i do think otherwise on that part um in regards to the gameplay though and what it was going to be yeah you're absolutely right you don't know what that's going to look like i think that it could be more uh not entertaining than it, it than it should be, and if and if they're pushing for too much realism, it could cause a problem in just having a fun game to play, and it's going to become a pretty um, simulator. You know, like it's just pretty to look at, pretty to pretty to, to go through one time, but you don't really want to you know fall and play into the world because it's just too much uh, realism going on. Um, I think that's the same. Uh, I think that's the same feeling we got when we played Red Dead Redemption 2. It's like, it's a slow burn, and it's boring, um, but the story was good enough for me to continue on, and um, it really wasn't about me wanting to explore the world, because I felt like it was empty and vast. Um, it was more about me more so just wanting to um, continue on with the story, and then the, the story beats were entertaining enough for me to get through it. But after that, the reason why that online did, fell off so hard is simply because the world wasn't engaging enough. So I think they have in a different space. They did have a different like. I think GTA Five is obviously more engaging in itself because it's an it's open city, has cars, has things you could do within that. Red Dead Redemption 2 just has horses, things like that. It's just not a different, it's not the same. So they can, f they could probably fall back more on it just being in this inner city and having a lot of things to go on in there. But I think you're absolutely right that they need to innovate on that part.
part of it. They need to truly show um, what their next level of gameplay looks like than just, you know, making the game pretty and and going from there. So uh, I agree there. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much a lot of what we wanted to talk about. There's a few other things that I wanted to mention, but we can say those for next time. I do want to give a, a quick shout out to Avatar Frontiers of Pandora for actually running well on um, consoles uh, and PC. Um, I was able to play that with no issues um, using Uplay. So I'm appreciative when a PC game actually launches in a good state because uh, it's not that often, unfortunately. Um, I'm not saying everything sucks, but a lot of it does. Um, but yeah, I think that's um, pretty much it. You want to talk about the day before? <laughs> uh, basically, it was a scam and everybody knew it surprise like no there's no surprise here the game was a scam the servers are trash um they they basically trying to hide that it was supposed to be an mmo um and they had a bunch of volunteers make the game for them this little demo that y'all playing for 40 dollars um that's it that's all it is to it i don't think there's any much else to say there was a lot of false uh, information and everything has been proven true that the game is bad. Um, probably one of the worst reviewed Steam games outside of Overwatch, um, which is crazy for them to be in the same caliber of ra- rating. And <laughs> but everybody is pat- mad at mad at uh, Blizzard, and they let it. They unleashed it when they finally put it on Steam. Um. So yeah, I think. Day before, any thoughts on day before, Josh? Did you did you p- spend forty dollars to play that game? Uh, not at all. <laughs> oh my god! Did you see the Did you see the the streams at least? Did you watch anybody stream it? No, I, I, uh-huh. I forgot about the game. I forgot it was a a. Yeah, I knew it was fake, but I forgot that people are still looking for it. The last time they said, "Oh, the game will come out next week." You know, like, <laughs> oh, never mind, we. We can't drop it. We need more time. Okay, it's fake. Yeah. We're gonna drop a trailer in a couple of months. We promise. And then it was what it was like a one minute trailer of the camera all the way up the, uh, the main <laughs> character. <right? laughs> the day I got scammed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to look look up the memes. But um, before we wrap up, I wanted to do a a quick. Two minute rant <laughs> about Capcom. Capcom, <laughs> what they done? About done. Capcom and then marketing, doing the worst marketing for one of the games I'm looking forward to, uh, Dragon's Dogma Two, um, mm. in which they keep marketing this game as is a super generic fantasy game. You know, <laughs> save the king, save the queen, become king, blah blah blah, fight the dragon. And like that's n- nobody care about that stuff in Dragon's Dogma One. Nobody cares about it in Dragon's Dogma Two. Dragon's Dogma One has <laughs> Devil May Cry combat that people like. Mm-hmm. It has magic and and an upgrade system that you can combine abilities from different classes and make super classes. Mm-hmm. And then the final dungeon is a a rogue like. So you can keep playing the final dungeon and fighting the boss and getting really good loot and abilities. And then they dropped a really good DLC, which does the same thing, which skips all the fantasy stuff and just puts you in a roguelike dungeon against some real new monsters that are like giant. You can climb up them and they got cool like abilities and all that. So the game is fun to play and they're not doing any of that stuff. They're making Dragon Dishonored 2 seem very boring and like, <laughs> A fifty-minute like presentation that doesn't really do, do anything. anything. Yeah, um, uh, give it a chance. If you got the old one, the first game, uh, just play the DLC. If you're interested in the second one, you know, just give it a try. They, you might have to look up your own, like, look up some live streams when it come out. Because the game, it is worth it. I think it is going to be good. It's just, I don't think Capcom knows how to market. 
Do you yeah. think it's been because it's so long since the first one came up? Um, my bad. Uh, one more time. Do you think it's been because you think they market it like that because it's been so long since the first one came up? Like kind of like not starting. No, I, I think it's a cultural difference. I think that the maybe they think what they're showing is hot because they don't get that much. They don't get a lot of Japanese made like Western fantasy games, but. Um, I think for us, like we're Skyrim and stuff like that, we see this stuff all the time. It seems pretty generic, yeah, generic Game of Thrones. Um, and like I said, the the first game, like nobody talks about the story because story don't matter. The gameplay is the reason <laughs> that anybody talks about Dragon's Dogma. Like your friends know about Dragon's Dogma, Jalen, because of the gameplay. <laughs> yeah, they talk about Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, some of the story stuff actually does get interesting, but again, that's after you've been playing the game for so long and you've mastered all these different classes. You know. Yeah. I think there you better is... <laughs> I think there... I, I have it downloaded on my um, Steam Deck, and uh, but I just I ain't got no time to play none of these games. So, um, I was going to give it another shot because i thought dragon diamonds 2 looked interesting um but yeah you're right after a while i started to tune it out because i'm just like okay i keep seeing the same thing over and over i'm looking for like the like the hood like the how how it's going to actually play and honestly all they're showing me is like story beats and um it's not really entertaining like that whole showcase i was not intrigued and i was like okay what are, what are we doing here? I didn't understand it, so um, yeah, you're. Yeah, I, like, I agree. Yeah, they they would have to go into like showing you the classes and mechanics. Like here mm. is our fire bender, <laughs> and you throw yeah. fireballs. And then yeah, they, here we have a lightning class, and then we mm. level them both up and combine it, and then throw meteors and like the spells. Like, I mean, you see a little bit in the trailer, but the spells are actually very big where you can throw a actual tornado at enemies, like, and it's a giant tornado. And you can put lightning elements on it and fire elements on it. It's like, that type of stuff is what you want to see in the in the trailer, not the generic fantasy. Yeah, they, they show, like, two min a minute of the trickster. That was it. All the rest of it is world setting, talus, quests, character creation. And then pre-order. Pre-order is ten, ten minutes, no, five, four minutes. I'm just talking about, about the pre-order. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I thought it was cool about about just some of the aspects, some of the stuff that they were showing on like the um, like combat wise, like all the flips and you know flurries and uh, yeah. like, as you said, the the, the large <laughs> or yeah, large they, uh, spells. I didn't I didn't finish the showcase. So, uh, but did they show that? At nighttime, Resident Evil zombies come out and attack you in the open world. Mm, no. Yeah, wait, because you the it's an open world game. You're doing quests. You go out, you know, kill kill the dragon and go back. Mm. Uh, but if you go out at nighttime, zombies come out of the ground and they chase you, and it makes it sort of like a dying light type of mm. thing where you don't want to go out at nighttime. Also, because you have a lantern where you literally cannot see anything because the world is pitch black. It's nighttime and there are no lights. If you don't have a lantern, you buy us. You're not by yourself, but you're out in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of zombies chasing you. and You can't see nothing. So it's like is this game multiplayer? Really nope. It oh. it has like you can share custom uh characters. And so mm. like if if I buff out my custom character and you and you uh, borrow him. I mean, you got you know a super buffed character that you brought for me, but it's not multiple. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, the the what you kind of mentioned is, is yeah exactly what they kind of need to do. Um, because Dragon Dogma, as much as I would be interested in playing it, it still hasn't intrigued me enough. Um, and you probably did a better job of telling a compelling story than they did. Um, and I thought Dragon Dog was too looked it good. I just I was like, what else? What else is there? Um, and I never even 
I think we talked about it a while back when you were talking about it. And I think I played it for a little bit. I just don't remember. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's another one of those things that now that it's on the Steam Deck and I can kind of just pick it up and play, I might give it a shot versus um, not. So, but, but I'm definitely going to get through Mass Effect first, which is another 100 or so, 50 hours. <laughs> so, so uh, it's going to be a while. Uh, but yeah, okay. Well, I mean that is the show, people. I want to thank y'all for listening. This is a two-hour one, and we didn't even get to everything that we wanted to talk about. It's kind of crazy. Um, but I want to thank y'all for listening as always. I appreciate y'all getting to this part. You the real OG. We will be back at the regular time next week. This is our Saturday special because we wanted to make sure we got talked about the game awards um and what what it what it kind of showed and what they who won and things like that we wanted to give it time to breathe uh before we kind of shot our uh, podcast but next week we'll be back at the regular scheduled time um talking about more topics and more things that have been uncovered over the week uh but thank you for listening as always and we will talk to you all next time peace